The Industrial Revolution and its consequences have been a disaster for the human race. They have greatly increased the life expectancy of those of us living in advanced countries. But they have uh, destabilized society, made life unfulfilling, uh, subjected us to many indecencies, caused psychological suffering, caused severe damage to the natural world. This is the opening to a 35,000 word manifesto that was sent in to the New York Times and the Washington Post by Ted Kaczynski. It is titled Industrial Society and Its Future. It was published in its entirety on both uh, newspapers, websites, and in the newspaper themselves. What could have caused a man who was so smart to turn into the person that he was? An American terrorist one of the most feared and mysterious that we have ever had. I will be previewing some of the uh, main points, the main events in his life that may have led him down this path. Uh, some of the events that he caused and even the events that led up to the capture of the Unabomber, Ted Kaczynski. When he was only nine months old, he received a very bad reaction to some uh, medications, and he had to be quarantined for 10 days in a hospital. At nine months, he was not allowed to see his parents. He was not allowed to see anyone other than the one doctor that was brought in to feed him at key points during the day. After he was uh, released from the hospital, his mother noted that he had changed significantly after those 10 days. He had trouble readjusting to the, uh, to the rest of society, and that he was no longer as happy as he had used to be. He was very well known for his IQ. It was between 160 and 170, or it is believed to have been so. For those of you who don't know much about that, Albert Einstein was only uh, suspected to have an IQ of about 160. It is well beyond the genius level. Throughout his schooling, he was constantly bullied for being so smart. He was commonly called a nerd. And he was a very eccentric person, which also got him into some trouble with other classmates. He managed to skip two grades during his primary schooling. And uh, by the age of 16, he was attending Harvard on a full scholarship. <coughs> he continued to excel while well at Harvard even with the very tough curriculum there. He managed to graduate only four years later, at the age of 20, with a bachelor's degree in mathematics. Although while he was attending Harvard, he attended a, uh, a study that was done by a teacher. It was shut down because of the results of the study before it was completed. He participated for about 200 hours in the study over the course of it, and essentially what they did was they hooked up a bunch of stuff to like men measure your uh, mental reactions as they just endlessly berated you with verbal abuse, just uh, harsh things that should never be said to anyone, especially not a 16-year-old boy. After graduating from Harvard, he continued his education at the University of Michigan. He left there with a uh, doctorate in mathematics. And then he got a job at the University of Berkeley as the youngest teacher to ever work there at only age 25. After two years of working there, he left without explanation. And he abandoned society as a whole. He cut ties with his family, who are pictured here. This is his younger brother David and his parents. This is Ed. After some time after leaving society, he, uh, he moved back to Chicago, where his brother was living, and he got a job at a packing factory that his brother managed. He worked there for a few months, but in the end he was fired because he was uh, harassing a 
female supervisor who he had gone on two dates with previously. After leaving Chicago again, he moved out to Montana on a piece of land that he had bought previously. And he sent a letter to his brother saying that he had to completely cut his ties with everyone and everything, and that he needed his help to do it. His brother came out there and they built a cabin together. That is where Ted Kaczynski lived for, until he was caught. This is a uh, very famous eyewitness account of Ted Kaczynski when he dropped off one of his bombs. It is, a, uh, it is also an outfit that was later sold for, I believe it was about $160,000 in an auction after he was caught. Um, soon after he retired to Montana for the second time, the Unabomber persona was born. His targets were uh, like high up corporate executives and academic individuals because he believed that they were responsible for the destabilized society that he saw. It was not until the fourth bombing that the FBI finally took note of it and decided this was not like isolated incidents. They assembled a task force and gave it the code name Unibomb, which stood for University and Airline Bomber. Over the next 17 years, he had sent out 16 bombs, and only one of them was defused before it went off. Progressively, the bombs got stronger as the years went on. At first, they would go off prematurely or only injure people nearby, but they quickly became weak. the 16th bomb, he sent his manifesto to the New York Times and the Washington Post. He also sent a letter that said if the manifesto was published in its entirety, unedited, that he would no longer continue his bombings. Both the New York Times and the Washington Post posted it the next day. Uh, many people believe that it is entirely because of his brother that he was caught. But in an interview, his brother said that most of the credit should go to his wife, because his wife is the one who noticed that the writing style between the manifesto and letters that they had received from Ted had, or were very similar. His brother took note of that, and after examining many of the letters and the manifesto in its entirety, he decided to report it to the police. The police went to the FBI with it, and after a few months of gathering evidence, they get uh, they managed to get a they managed to raid his cabin. When they raided his cabin, they found Kaczynski, a live bomb, ready to be nailed. Many components for more bombs. Forty thousand handwritten journal pages documenting everything that he had done and his process. He currently resides in a uh, maximum security prison near Florence, Colorado. He is serving eight consecutive life sentences with no possibility of parole. During the trial, he absolutely refused to uh, cooperate with his lawyers and flee insanity because he still to this day believes that he is not insane and he refuses to talk to anyone who believes that he is. There was an auction after his capture where they uh, sold off the hoodie and the sunglasses that were included in the previous sketch, the 40,000 handwritten journal pages, the typewriter that was used to uh, create the manifesto, and many other random things that were in his cabin, including rather odd things like a tie box that they believed he was going to nail a bomb in, his shoes, a couple other pairs of sunglasses, 
and some things that he used for survival, such as arrows and axes. Uh, all of the money that was gained from that auction was given to the families of those that were injured or killed in his bombings. No one knows exactly what led him to uh, the path that he went down, and no one knows what this genius could have accomplished if he had gone down a different path.